let's go over swap files. Swap files are something of um, a misunderstood thing of Linux. Some people think you need swap partitions. Some people say you need swap files. Some people say you don't even need swap. And really, the answer is it depends. So in this video, we're going to go over that. We're going to explain uh, basically the differences between partition and swap file and how to enable both, how to use both, and then if you even need to use it or maybe not use it as much as you do. Because at the end, we want to maximize memory usage and not swap usage. So with all that said, let's jump into this video. Okay, so let's jump right in here. This is just a standard Linux installation with the swap actual uh, swap file in here. So let's take a look at uh, just the, the specs we have. I'm gonna run an HTOP. If you haven't used HTOP before, every distribution out there has it, whether it's Arch, Debian, you name it, just install HTOP. And you can kind of see what's going on with your CPUs, but the big thing we're looking at is memory usage and swap usage. You'll notice uh, memory usage, I have about 16 gigs of memory and a 14 gig swap file. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, honestly, if a 14 gig swap file on this system is kind of pointless because one, it's not enough to do a hibernation. So if you have over 16 gigs uh, or 16 gigs and up, the only real reason to use swap files in a residential space like this, or maybe if you're doing like heavy virtual machine work where you're utilizing probably more than half of your memory and also doing something on top of your you know, operating system that you're running the virtual machine in. So if you're not big on virtual machines and you're basically just using your Linux box for just regular stuff, whether that be games, video editing, whatever it might be, you probably don't even need a swap file. So in this instance, a 14 gig swap file is kind of pointless because that's all I really use this box for is just testing like this. So I would probably actually just disable it altogether. But we can also kind of talk about when you need swap files. Now, swap files by themselves, uh, you need for hibernation, which I just mentioned, or like system standby and those types of things, you need to have a big enough swap to cover all of your memory. And technically, you probably should have uh, a little more than what you have in your memory just to make sure. Now, on top of that, it depends on your swap file. Some people always say have enough swap to cover your memory for just hibernation. However, when you get to like eight gigs, that's probably a good thing. Like if you're in eight gigs, you probably want about a 10 gig swap. And if you're at four gigs or two gigs of memory, you don't have much, I would recommend probably double or triple what you have. If you're at two gigs, I'd probably recommend a six gig swap file. And if you're at four gigs of memory, I'd probably recommend around an eight gig swap file. So just keep that in mind as far as just how big your swap file should be. So in this instance, let's let's do some stuff with this, this actual system. So we're gonna go ahead and kill this and we're gonna turn off swap. Uh, all together. So right now, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and pull up Gparted just so you can kind of see the partition structure. So you see right now, I'm using a uh, better FS for my main root. Uh, my boot is this is actually a UEFI or an EFI uh, system. So it requires this and I believe this is also GPT. So that's uh, just kind of give you an idea of the scheme here. And then we have our swap partition. Now I can't touch or change any of this just yet because we're utilizing swap. So we need to first turn off swap. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. We just do swap off and we can just pull up the help and just kind of show you the options. So what we're gonna do is swap off dash A and verbose. So this should uh, disable it. However, we didn't run it as sudo. So we'll do sudo. All right, so now we've disabled swap. And let's say I wanted to reclaim that. So we'll relaunch Gparted here. And you'll notice it is no longer locked. I can actually delete this and say, okay, cool. So I'm gonna just go ahead and leave this right here. I wasn't actually able to grow this backwards. To move all this, I would need to unmount this partition, boot into not this environment and move all of my stuff forward. Um, that's going to be a little bit ugly for the 14 gigs. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as is, but we're not using swap anymore. However, the swap partition still exists because 
anytime you boot this system, it's going to look for that partition. So we need to make sure from the system level we take that out. So uh, let's just do that real fast. We're going to nano into our etc f stab. Let's just come down here and we're going to comment that out because we're going to actually come back to this and change uh, basically how this is done. All right, so from here, now we can actually create like a swap file. So let's say we wanted to remove our swap and just to kind of verify our swaps off, you'll see now that swap's not actually going. But let's say we wanted to just make, um, I'm only gonna make like a two gigabyte swap file or maybe even like a, a one gig swap file. So we'll do sudo f allocate dash l one g and we're gonna put it as swap file in our root. With this file created, now we need to actually write zeros to it so it's all blanked out. There's no fragmentation going on. So this will create that one gig swap file. All right, that's created. And then we want to make sure that only root has access to it because we don't want to program getting into our swap file and seeing other information that's in there. So uh, we want to make sure from only a system level. So we'll change how that is. We'll go sudo chmod 600 swap file so now we've written it we've set our permissions now we also need to uh, make it a swap file so we do mk swap swap file this sets up swap space for it and then from here we can actually engage our swap file so we'll go sudo swap on forward slash swap file Okay, so we found some stuff out after doing some research of why this wasn't working and it wasn't anything with my distribution. It's actually BetterFS. Uh, BetterFS actually does what's called copy on write and it does this a lot. That's how you get like really quick snapshots and other really cool features with BetterFS. But natively, BetterFS does not support swap files. And what you can do is put like a no cow or no copy on write attribute to the swap file and go about enabling it that way. However, if you have better FS, I wouldn't recommend it. A lot of people are like, this is super experimental. Not really very many people use swap files with better FS. So long story short, don't use a swap file with better FS is my recommendation as nobody else on the internet really contributes on this actual thought process. Many people say it can be done. However, I just wouldn't recommend it because of how BetterFS is designed. So swap files in BetterFS, don't do it, is my recommendation. If you need it, uh, obviously, just use a partition and, and just do it that way. So even though the beginning of this video is like, there's no difference between the two, look at that. Actually practicing it and doing it, we, we discovered something new <laughs> that's not well documented on the internet. So anyways... I thought this was kind of an interesting deal and that's why I showed it. But honestly, most people aren't running BetterFS and these steps can be followed completely to the end and you'll be completely fine. So uh, just know that uh, as far as using swap files and swap partitions, they're basically the same. Now, with all that said, we're just going to do one final check here. Uh, look up and just do a cat of our F stab. Uh, all this looks good. I actually marked out the old swap. So we're good there, and we'll just exit out. And then we'll just do an H top as well. And you'll notice that the swap file is off. Now, since this is 16 gigs of memory, I'm gonna continue to leave the swap file off. However, let's say you have a swap partition or a swap file. Honestly, performance-wise, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's say it's utilizing too much of the swap file. Let's say you had 16 gigs, but you're big on VMs and you really only want to use that swap file when you absolutely have to use it. So you can do something called vm.swappiness, and that is actually going to be in nano. We'll, we'll actually go to etc or, or nano etc system ctl.conf. Now, this is blank because there's nothing here, but a lot of systems when you have a swap file has what's called swappiness. So we're gonna go and just type this out real fast just so you can see it. Swappiness, and this is usually uh, equals 10. Now, this is 
decent and, and there's not a this would say only use swappiness on the occasion when you you have to but for the most part run everything from memory now on older systems or systems with uh, more swap space than memory let's say you have a two gigabyte memory and six gigs of swap file obviously you're going to be doing a lot of swapping so you'd probably want this at like a 60 that's on the super high end on a very low end machine that's what that would look like. Now, let's say uh, on my inside machine, some people are like, holy crap, you got tons of memory and tons of swap space. What the heck? And sometimes I'll run three or four virtual machines all within that same PC. And my swappiness actually looks like that. It looks like a three because it's really not using my swappiness unless it absolutely needs to. It's only using my swap uh, partition because it needs to and honestly in that machine i could use a swap file again that there's no difference between the two but i only want to use that swap file when absolutely necessary so i turn it all the way down to a three most people would recommend not going below a 10 however i absolutely hate using the swap file and it's only there out of necessity so that's why i use it as a three and really at a three the only purpose it serves is for hibernation or system standby and those type of features so on this outside machine i usually always turn it completely off so i don't really care and I won't use a swap file for it. But if you do use hibernation or system standby and you only really want that feature and not really utilize your swap file, I would crank it down to something like this. And that way you can have your feature, but also not be bogged down by using swap file because obviously you don't really need it uh, with 16 gigs of memory and you're not heavy on uh, resource usage or you're barely ever tapping into it. So that's a good uh, explanation as far as uh, when you want to use a swap, when you don't, and you can tinker around with this value and figure out what's right for you and your system. So that was swap in Linux. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this because honestly, it took a little bit of research because I was trying to really figure out exactly when one would be better than the other. And a lot of times I'd find a, a lot of this good information. I was like, okay, this will make the perfect video for today. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.